Welcome back to another episode of Stay at Home Storytime. Today we're going to read a nonfiction book. Um, before we left for our little stay at home learning break, um, my class had just started learning about trees and we were so excited to learn about trees because we had just finished learning all about wood and paper and how they're made from trees. We got a chance to make our own particle board ornaments and we got a chance to make our own paper and write how-to stories about how we made our paper that we could write on out of toilet paper that we got from school. Um, and so today we're going to read a book about trees and about the life cycle of a tree. How does a tree even start? What does a tree look like before it becomes the big trees that we're used to seeing on our schoolyard? This book is called A Tree Grows Up, written by Marfe Ferguson Delano. And I'll put a link to this one. This one's written by National Geographic for Kids. So I'll put a link to where you can purchase this book if you'd like a copy for yourself. Look! What's that squirrel eating? It's an acorn. Squirrels love to munch on yummy acorns. Acorns drop from oak trees in the fall. Squirrels eat many of them, but they don't eat them all. The squirrels missed this acorn. One by one, falling leaves cover it up. The wind blows soil over it. In the winter, snowflakes blanket the acorn in height. Well, even if we don't live where it snows, the acorn, if it doesn't get eaten, is still going to get covered by other leaves and soil and dirt. So don't you worry, all of my Bay Area friends who maybe have never even seen snow before, that's okay. I promise this little acorn is still going to work some magic. Sprout! When spring comes, the shell of the acorn splits open. A tiny root peeks out and pokes down into the soil. Can you see right here where the acorn was? It split open and a little root is growing out of it and going all the way down into the soil. Soon, a little green stem with tiny leaves pushes up and reaches towards the sun. It's a baby oak tree. Wait a second, all of my Oakland kindergartners, do we know what an oak tree looks like? Yes, we do. I wonder if you could even see an oak tree from your house. Look out the window or the next time you go for a walk, see if your grownups can help you find an oak tree in Oakland. Day by day, the baby tree grows. Its stem, called a trunk, becomes harder. By the end of the summer, it's as tall as a pencil. Year by year, the young tree grows. When it's five years old, <gasps> raise your hand if you're five. Oh, no, I'm not five. Are you five? Maybe you're five. So when this tree is as old as you are, if you're five, it's tall enough for people to stand underneath. <gasps> Can you imagine if you grew that tall when you were five? Oh my gosh, that's like taller than a grown-up. Songbirds perch on its slim branches. Chirp, 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 chirp. Just like you, a tree needs food to live and grow, but a tree can make its own food. <gasps> what? A tree can make its own food? I don't even know what that means, so I think we need to keep reading. Sunshine helps the leaves turn air and water into sugary food. Wait a second. Air we breathe, water we drink, and somehow... A tree can turn those two things into sugary, sweet, yummy food? Hmm. This food flows through the veins of the leaves to every part of the tree. Whoa! Do you think our human veins can do that? Not exactly. We have to eat food in order to get nutrients, but a tree has super, super special skills that it can make its own food and it doesn't have to eat anything. Pretty cool. I mean, can you imagine a tree trying to eat a hamburger? 
No. A tree wouldn't eat a hamburger because it doesn't need to because it makes its own food. <laughs> That's so exciting. Every fall, when the weather turns chilly, the tree's leaves stop making food. They change from green to red to brown. Then they dry up and fall off. Brr. In winter, the tree looks dead, but it's not. It's just resting. It rests all winter long. So where we live, or where me and my kindergartners live, we don't get snow. So we don't ever see trees that look like this. But in the winter time, we do notice that a lot of the trees, especially the oak trees around Oakland, have no leaves left on them. That's because it's winter time. In the winter time, there's not quite as much sun. So it's a little bit harder for trees to make their own food. So instead, they go into like sleepy, sleepy time, kind of like hibernation, the way a bear might hibernate during the winter time. Trees kind of do that too. Spring brings rain and warm sunshine. The oak tree wakes up. New leaves spread wide to catch the sunlight. The tree keeps growing taller and taller. Its trunk and branches get thicker and thicker. Squir squirrels scurry up and down a trunk and a family of birds nest on the tree. So trees help make air for us to breathe but trees also provide homes to lots of animals such as squirrels and birds. Bloom! One spring when the oak tree is about 30 years old. 30 years old. Can you imagine being 30 years old? I cannot imagine being 30 years old because I am only five years old. Oh, I'm not five years old? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure last time I counted I was five years old. Oh, I am a grown up. You're right. You're five years old. So when this tree is 30 years old, which is as old as a grown up, small flowers grow next to the new leaves. After a few weeks, the flowers fall off and little knobs form where the flowers used to be. They're baby acorns. Over the summer, they get bigger and bigger. In the fall, the acorns drop from the tree. Many animals come to feed on the fallen acorns. Chipmunks, wild turkeys, bears, blue jays, deer, and squirrels, of course. So big. The oak is now a grown up tree. That means that this tree is even older than Miss Walsh. It will keep making acorns for the rest of its long life. It'll keep growing taller. Its trunk and branches will grow thicker and thicker. One day, a branch will be strong enough for a swing. Whee! Up, out, and down. A tree gets bigger in three ways. It grows up, it grows out, and it grows down. The top of the tree is called the crown like a crown on your head. It's made up of branches and twigs. Tiny tubes inside the tree trunk carry water from the roots to the leaves. And roots hold a tree in place. They keep it from falling over when strong winds blow. So here you can see we have the crown, we have the trunk, and then we have the roots. The roots are the part that are underground. Every year, new shoots push out of the buds at the very tips of the branches and twigs. This causes twigs to grow longer and longer and the tree to grow taller. Growing out. Every year, a new layer of wood forms underneath the bark of the trunk and branches. This makes the trunk get thicker. Do you see all the rings? So you can tell how old a tree is by how many rings it has. Because you have roughly around one ring for every year that the tree has been alive. And growing down, most of a tree's roots are underground. Every year the roots spread wider and deeper. That is how a tree grows down. Home sweet tree. Birds and squirrels aren't the only animals that make their home in oak trees. 
Here are just a few of the many different animals that live in oak trees. A honeybee, a white-footed mouse, a gray tree frog, a morning cloak butterfly, a tree cricket, and even a skunk. What animals have you seen in oaks or other trees near your home? Hmm. Super seeds. Most trees begin their lives as seeds. Seeds come in many different shapes and sizes. An acorn is a seed. It grows into an oak tree. Acorns have smooth, hard shells with a rough, bumpy cap, just like that. Here are some other kinds of seeds. How many of them have you seen? Here, we'll get nice and close for this one. So this is what the seed of a maple tree looks like. So there's a maple tree and maple seeds. And over here, I'm sure you have seen seeds inside of an apple that will grow into an apple tree, or the seeds of a cherry that will grow into a cherry tree, or wait a second, what about pine cones? Did you know pine cones even pine cones have seeds in them, and that is how you grow a pine tree. Leaf rubbings. All right, are you ready for your art project of the day? I want you to collect some leaves in different shapes and sizes. This could be from your backyard or if you go take a walk. Place the leaf on a hard, flat surface with the bottom side of the leaf facing up. So it would be good to put it on a flat table or up against a flat wall. Put a thin piece of paper over the leaf. Gently rub the side of a crayon back and forth on part of the paper over the leaf. Be sure to rub over the entire leaf. There you have it, lovely leaf art. So you'll notice when you do this that different leaves are gonna have different shapes and also different textures. So some of them might have a thicker kind of stem that went through it. Some might have lots of little lines. Some might have only a few big lines. So I want you to collect some leaves and I want you to talk about what is similar and what is different about the leaves. Why do you think leaves are similar and different? Do all trees have the same kind of leaves? If trees have different leaves, does that mean they're the same kind of tree or a different kind of tree? Until next time!